So over the last two weeks or so, I've been testing the Farm Loop system on my A1 Mini. If you're not familiar with Farm Loop, I have links down in the description below. Essentially, what it is is an automated print farm. For lack of a better word, all you really need is filament. So if you've got something like an AMS Lite or an AMS for the uh, P1X1 series of printers, all you need to do is make sure that there's enough filament on there to keep keep your things going, right? So I've basically just had a bucket beneath this A1 Mini that I've been testing over the last two weeks. And obviously I have to come down and change out the filament because the AMS light is not hooked up to this machine. That is one of the drawbacks to how my setup is. But today we're gonna change that a little bit. I wanna get Farm Loop installed on A1 Mini with AMS and A1 Mini 1. A1 Mini 2 is kind of my take on the go printer if I'm going on vacation and want a printer or uh, I want something up in my office. So that one we're gonna leave free from the Farm Loop system for now. But I've already got two more systems printed out and ready to go. Basically, you just have this little front pusher that goes on the front of the machine in place of where the front cover goes. And then your base system prints out in four separate parts, two different plates for each machine that allows you to tilt the machine back up like this so the parts are more easily able to fall off. So I've got this stuff printed out now for the other two machines. Gonna go ahead and get them assembled, get them put together and get these machines to use. So the only thing that I've sort of found to be an issue so far with my setup is this A1 Mini in particular likes to shift a little bit, kind of like that by the time it's done printing. And I think that just has to do with the material that I have on here. So what I'd need to do probably for all of these machines is create some sort of front bracket or left and right bracket to prevent the machine from shifting. Otherwise, everything has been phenomenal so far. To get these parts together, like I mentioned, you just kind of slide them into place and I like to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a smack there. Sometimes it can be a little bit tight. There, so we've got one side attached using up some older filament or smaller spools for that matter. And then our next side. Maybe use a mallet instead of your hand. Just give it a nice soft tap. And that side's good to go. All right, so there's how the parts go together. Pretty simple. Then your A1 Mini sits right on top of it. If you have the A1, it's, I'm assuming, Fairly similar to this setup, although these parts might be slightly too big to fit on an A1 build plate. So I'm not 100% sure because I don't have any of the A1s in the shop to actually test that with. But uh, from what I can tell, it's going to be a similar setup anyways because you still need to tilt the machine forward a little bit. Probably just a slightly different way of putting it together. So we'll get our second one put together. That way it's just as easy. All right, two more A1 mini base plate assemblies ready to go. So obviously I've got this bucket down here that I've been collecting some of the dumbbell ends with. But my friend Sam over at Samcraft came up with this little design that essentially mounts onto the front of your racks, whether they're uh, wood or I guess you could bolt it through if it's metal. But it allows uh, little plastic bins to slide through and kind of sit on the front of the machine. So when it's done printing, it can just eject them right into there. And I don't have to worry about keeping bins and buckets and stuff below the machines. One thing I need to eliminate, though, is these poop chutes, poop bins, because they're gonna make this setup a little bit too big. I need this other A1 Mini to be away from the rack, so to speak, so this thing can have room to move forward and tilt forward and do what it needs to do without any buckets or parts bumping into this. So I'm gonna have to come up with a different design for the bins, but let's be honest, I haven't emptied these in quite some time and 
Well, they're, they're still fine. So I think we can get away with some smaller bins. Maybe keep it for the A1 Mini uh, with the AMS up top here, just because, well, this has a lot more pooping to do, for lack of a better word. But I think we can get away with some smaller bins for the single unit A1 Minis anyway. Fortunately, our little original Mac screen that I had on here is gonna have to come off. Just wanna make sure these aren't gonna bump into each other. All right, and that looks pretty much good to go. I do need this cover plate popped off and we need to replace it with one of these 3D Farmer front plates. To do that, these two front screws on the A1 Mini cover are going to come off. And then this plate can just slide right on, it's supposed to just slide right on over. So that slides right on like that. Then we can reinstall these two front screws here. All right, after that's installed, you are pretty much ready to go with Farm Loop. If you're using something like the A1 or A1 Mini, you've got two different push options. You've got a, a lift and you've also got just a standard push, which is what I prefer to use, at least with items like the dumbbells where you don't really need anything to lift. Uh, because this corner is going to get underneath them anyways. If you're printing something super small or flat to the build plate that doesn't have any sort of chamfer, chamfered edge to it, you may want to go with the lift part first. So it'll come down and start pushing and then lift up on this to kind of break the part free. They are also releasing an update that's going to include some sort of mechanism that to flex this build plate, similar to how they do it on the P1P where the bed comes down and hits against these little points here and it will flex the bed up five or six times to break the parts loose. That's coming to the A1 Minis and the A1s. I'm not exactly sure how they plan to implement it, but that is something that is going to be happening. They've also got an auxiliary fan that I should have here in a couple of weeks, hopefully, that plugs into one of the AMS slots on the side and kind of provides a little bit more cooling from the side to help cool the bed down faster so it doesn't take quite as long for the whole switch and start printing process begins again. That is on its way here from 3D Farmers. Thank you to Yan Yan for sending that over and reaching out. I do appreciate it. We've got one more of these to get done. We're gonna do that up here on the A1 Mini with the AMS. That way I can load all four spools up with the same color and keep this thing running for essentially days and days and days uh, without it having to need me down here to replace the filament. So for this one, obviously the little chest mount thing that I've got going on here that I just filmed everything else on isn't gonna work because well, you're just gonna be looking at the side of the bench. So this one's the exact same process. Excuse me while I kill this spider. The only issue that I see with how this one is set up is because I have the spools for the two units down below front mounted, we may run into some issues where this goes to push parts off and they get either jammed up in this little crevice here or they, they don't fall into a bin. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out, but that's for a later me at a later time. Only thing that's left to do now is put that front cover on. I'm gonna get that done real quick and then we can jump into the computer and see how the farm loop stuff works for the A1 Minis. All right, now that I've got both of these machines set up with the farm loop system, the base and the pusher, I'm gonna ignore A1 Mini with AMS for right now, because I do have something to fix with slot one. It's not feeding filament correctly, so I'll leave that for me after this video. But I do need something to prevent these from sliding around. Like I said, they kind of move pretty easily. Honestly, a screw on each side would probably work for the time being, but we do need to come up with something a little bit more permanent for the foreseeable future. So that's gonna wrap this one up. Don't wanna make this too long, but it's a pretty simple process of getting those things downloaded, printed out and installed on the A1 Minis. In the next video in this little mini print farm farm loop series, uh, we're gonna get farm loop going on the A1 Minis and take you through the farm loop software and how easy it is to send the files over. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see the next in the series, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this type of content to let YouTube know you enjoyed this type of content. And if you wanna see another video like it, there's another one queued up for you right here. I will see you in the next one, folks, where we get Farm Loop finally running on these two A1 minis. Take care.